Uh, hello guys, good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to our channel. So, last week or the last series we have, uh, we have successfully have the register API and the uh, login API that will generate the ZW token. So, in this video, uh, I'm going to continue. We're going to continue also to, to show you the how we we will create a confirm email so in our registration we need to check if it's really a valid email so uh, we're going to have a confirm email to send it to the email of the user who registered and they need to confirm it so we go to our interface we go to the user service and we need to add another I know the I user service interface. So we need to add another signature here for the confirm email. So it's also a task. So it's a trading task. So we still use the manage user as a type. We've been created this data or the taxes layer or the data model. And then we will name a confirm. Confirm email async. So this is asynchronous. And then of course uh, we are going to need the user ID as well as user ID as well as uh, we need to validate the token. So we just need the token and the user ID. Okay. So the uh, confirm email that we added in our I user service interface. So in our user service, this is the, as you can see, it's now having a red underline, which means it's complaining because we added a one signature and it's not being implemented. So all we have to do is just to implement it. Okay. And then it will have here the confirm email async. All right. So we have to add the implementation here. Have a try cast first. And then, all right, so we need to implement the confirm email async. So first we have to do, we have to find the user ID. So we'll put it here, user equal. Uh, of course, we have to use the user manager variable that's already injected here in our constructor. So that way we can have the method find. I uh, find ID as thing and then we pass the user ID no parameter user ID. Alright, so since this is an async, so we need to have the async and here we need to put the out. Alright, and then we check if the user is not null. The user equals to null, so we have to return we have to return no user manager response, which is a success is false, and then the message that we are going to return, we already have this error message uh, constant value so we just need invalid user all right invalid user and then we can add actually the user id all right so now we need to have the token so before we can get the token, we have to decode it. So let's see before the token variable is equal to we need to use the web encoder. So it's already provided in ESP.NET for utilities web encoders. So we encode the 64 decode bits. It's already have a method bits. 
and the token that we pass. So remember the token is already encrypted. So we need to decode it first. And then it's decoded but now we have to put it the normal token. So login screen normal normal token. So we can see encoding encoding that's the big effect get string get string then the value of the decoded token so we'll check it later on what is happening here and it's true or it's correct then we can just refactor our code so after that uh we need to Confirm email assigned. So we have to await because it's already out and asynchronous. User manager that confirm there's a method there. Confirm email thing is there's this is already built in by ASP.NET Core uh, identity system. So we pass, as you can see here, there are two parameters. So yes, we uh, can pass the user, which is in our first variable, and the normal token. Normal token that we decode. Okay, so we are checking it. If result is succeeded it's meant to say confirm email assign is okay so we then return the message our corporate area user manager messages that's all the deal uh it's still the message we assign this we have already a constant here Email confirm. So that's just the messaging, and if you need to change it, we need to access it from our shared uh, uh, view model. I mean, that's the part that we need to change the uh, messaging part. So it's not hard coded here. And of course, this is true. All right. So it's meant to say the uh, confirm the email and the valid token is found in our database. Alright, so now we return the new user managers. The message is success is powerful. it is not succeeded so you can just keep succeeded else or anyway if it's not succeeded this will be the next line so email messages that email not confirmed and then we can put the error this is an a list of error result that error that's the link And so this is our ML ML password machine. So we need to fix it where we can take it. So let's go here. Remember in the first during the registration, we leave it behind there that, that's for the email confirmation. So we go to the registration part and we need to confirm email. This one, the terminal will do it later in the confirm email. So we will continue here. 
here in this part for the registration there's a confirmation demo you need to set a string url to be equal to dollar So, let's see here the you can access now the configuration variable. We have the configuration because we need to access the app URL. So, what's our app URL? I think it's not here. There's no app URL here, so when, when we run this one, oh, let's see, run it, uh, I need to comment this first. We need to send the app URL because that will be the user that will and they receive the email. We need to confirm with the ML link. So we need this app URL. In the production, you can change it. So that's why we just need to put this in our app setting so it can easily be changed. Okay. So we need this. the app URL here and then the app URL then the API address which is API right and then open petition that confirm email confirm email and then confirm email we need to Define this or to, to have this in our authentication with API. We are passing user ID. It should be equal to this one uh, identity user. Yeah, we have that identity user that ID. So this will be identity user that. ID and of course we need also to pass the token so this will be the token equal to valid email token so I think that's it Email token. So first, we need to access our configuration. So here we have not injected yet. So when we add the I configuration interface using Microsoft extension configuration. And I just name the variable configuration. And after that, we need to have the sign fields like that. And of course, as convention, I don't like to use the day, so I just trimming the underscores. So. We have injected it in our constructor, the user service. So by that, we can go back here and put the configuration that is a variable of URL in our app setting. So that way we will be able to access this url slash then 
you cannot put this last it's already have this last there so we need to remove this last here so it will be api slash authentication confirm email all right so we have the confirm email in our authentication api i think there's no confirm email yet so we need to build it also okay so we add uh confirm email here let's add it at the top so it will be api slash uh, authentication controller and we will define confirm email passing user id and open so public async so they are asynchronous non-blocking and of course this is i action result um, name it confirm email and the variable is user id parameters because we are in token so that's our api so this is http get so we have to provide it and in our method we just say confirm email because we will name it confirm email async so we'll be standard that our method are async so we need to put async but in the api we don't want to support that async that's why we define here this is the only confirm email so right so that's it so we can see bar so would be equals to this is a thing so await and then it access the user service confirm email asking that's the one we just defined earlier so at the user id and that token okay okay so if we saw the success then the return redirect redirect to this and configuration the basically then what you are then We need to have a um, this is a static file from the email that is given in. So this is a static static thing that we need to add it to in our folder later on. So that's the problem. We direct and hold it and up URL then up URL. So this one. It's up here. Room email does not exist, so we need to. First, I have a folder here. 
four hours now to find. Add no folder. Or double your wall. Then we add an uh, item. This will be HTML only. HTML page. So, I mean, I can turn in here. Alright, so it's here. We just see it's the one. The email has been confirmed. And also, email has been sent. Let's have to refine. Confirm email, it's just for it. This is confirm email that in a foreign country. That's the problem here. So maybe just to go to the startup. We register the I'm going to register the static file here. No data problem. Obvious. Static file. And the same. No problem with configuration of URL. Then redirect. Return redirect. This is a concatenation configuration of the RA. So we this is wrong. Of the RA, like that, that's the, that's the problem. And then we fix uh, so If it's not, it's a return, you just return bad request. But of course, before we need to have this, we need to check if the string is null or empty. This is the ID. So, the string is null or empty. Not or like this. I think that is wrong. We need to check if the pass is is not or like this. So, Then we return not found. So we predefine what that is. So not found. So not that. We have three. We take it and it's working. So let's go back to the user service here. After here. We send email. So 
don't have no service yet so we will be using there are lots of there are lots of email sender provider or api so in this part we'll be using sendgrid email i've been using this for some of my projects and i have the api key already so if you don't have api key you just need to go, go to the sendgrid api you can register there they are free so uh yeah and i have my video as well here i have the tutorial how to start creating api uh syncrete api so you can browse it so in this video we are just doing i am going to show the tutorial for how to create a syncrete email but i'm going to implement it here so first we'll go to our interface we need to define another interface class and that will be interface and we will name it by mail service so in the future if you have another kind of sending an email so you can just create the complete class using this signature email service so this is a standard or general signature so we will have class send email so we need to send email asking because we will go to asynchronous and just put the parameter here so email that you can define it or param just depending on how many email parameters you will have or so for now it's very simple so we just need where to send the email the subject and the content itself we just had code the other method like for example sender email okay that's only basic that we are going to define from this uh, tutorial and then after creating this mail service of course we need to have the uh, implementation and the services we got to add another class and we will call it uh, since we are using SendGrid, so we are going to SendGrid mail service. If you have uh, done, uh, I think there's another way to send SMTP mail gun like that. So you are just going to use for to create another implementation phone click class and you have to define, I, I mean, inherit the email service class, I interface email service interface so we are not here and of course we are going to implement it so um, let's have a try that soon um yeah we're gonna have the api key um Syngrid client, you need to install the Syngrid here. You need to install first the Syngrid API or the Syngrid package. So, install package Syngrid. So, we'll leave it the version. We we'll just need the new version. So I'm installing the Syngrid package here, so you can see in our dependency package, there's already Syngrid version 9.28. So that way you can have, you can access the Syngrid API. So now, first we need to define the API key. So this API key, so we just need to define in our updating as well. So I think we can have it here. Uh, let's see. Same grid. Um, the value. So as I said, I already have same grid in some of my projects, so I just used it. So I have to go to and other projects that we have 
modules I have here absolutely no did I define the same bit here? What is not in the Let's find another project that I use in the So program, so we can find the same bit here. I have another IET IET. So I will just use this. Constructor and we injected in this class. So we need to icon to integration. So that will define the variable property. So we can have configuration variable that gets switched So uh, no, we just have to put directly because it's just in configuration that like that. This one All right, so then we can get it, and then it's not compost the email. Sendry, Sendry, Client, Sendry, Client, Sendry, Client. 
Since the client is in the link is using single, remember that we just install the package recently. And from equals the new email, email address. So we bring in the name case of email address in the same way that helper that name. And yeah, the sender email did not define it. So sender email we can just have uh we can copy it as well in the configuration. So we use the shared this one. So we have refined already in the display. So we will use email message body. Before that, we will create this in our top setting. We need to add another value. In the email, and just repeat a single email. For example, my email address. So when you receive the email, that's the from email. So sending this. After that, we send to no email address. <laughs> so the email address is to email so we have the parameters to email so the other one over register days and then for this is it's called email helper yeah. and you can define there are lots of method there so we'll just use sync create single email only so this is the basic one so you so define your single so code in the subject and then of course the function uh, you are going to send okay, that's it. so create single mail email mail helper create single email that's the problem I'm not using multiple ways to pen. I'm just using email one, one, two, three, four. I'm just using single email. Create single email on you should have your simulator. Where are you existing? Create single email from to subject content. Uh, we missing one parameter, so we can just then connect to its documents. So the bar is fine. Thanks, Toby. and then passing your message all right like that we can um, configure all it take it to post okay. okay this is a very simple sending of the email using the syncrete api so you know that we install the package in grid and then uh, we're defining some uh, some uh, 
of signals, the single read of i, and the sensitive signal. Okay, so we already have the the sending of the concrete plus for the sending of element. Next, we need to go to the user service from here. We have to use the mod service. So the mod service injected here. Not yet. So we are going to inject that in the constructor part. And then we add now the IMO service. And let's give it more service. So we put it inside here so we just move it at the top. We want to make it private. Private is only. And this would be. This is the uniform that serves and of course this will be underscore my service. Why is fix no variation? What? Why is the variation? I don't like. I just need to have uh, like this. So here, this is the variable, what is that? What is the violation? Okay, I need to get rid of it. Okay, so we can use the main service now. But before that, we have to add also that in our startup because it will not, it will not work if we are not going to register here. So service is the we can use add sync, trans and singleton. I can just use singleton. I mail service, then the concrete class is sending mail service like that. So after you register that in your startup, then it will be accessible. It can be injected in the this one constructor, in the user service, and you can use it here. So that's the dependency injection in C-sharp so you are not going to define or to create an instance of the class in your implementation which is very tightly coupled. This part is this the email service is not or uh, the user service is not dependent on the email service so they are not it is hidden or it's being abstracted so by the way that's the dependency injection principle it's uh, loosely coupled now. There is no instant of the class for the mail service, as you can see. So now we are going to see a wait because this is a thing. And we have now the mail service. Then we access the method of the mail service. We send email a thing. And of course, now we have to use the identity user that email. This is the email that we are going to send, and the message will use the predefined message, confirm email message, and of course the content, we just put the highlight as it's one here, this is an HTML time, this one, then we don't have the message the email body one it will be predefined now third uh with the in and before that we just close the uh, uh, close the tab of this one Okay, 
this one would be in plus and you can add another then theta this is the body after the theta can define this is the new glass is good. and then of course um it's right for the url let me click and you get this image they will click it's straight uh equals So we are here, the variable is one. And after that, this one, we have the message. This is that. This will be fine in the body. And of course, after that, body and you press the name tab and the paragraph tab and you press it so that's it should be there's no error and then after that we just return and we'll just remove this again uh, and this will return the matrix Sorry, it's created. I think it's already here because we already did that before. Uh, yeah, because this should be a couple. succeeding then that's it we will return as a created well it's not this is a problem the return and we will say misses if the value error misses you will be able to find it error misses this are not created and of course it's success is also if you find that error run the program now the api and then of course we for now we will use the postman to test it so in this registration district are because this here just delete the existing data Firing now, um, of course, uh, the confirm email is inside the registration, so we call the registration first. And we're opening our database. Uh, 
okay so this is the authentication data that we have we just delete the delete from this data.net resource So this is empty now. This is empty now. So we need to swipe as this from the speed that we can use. So we will register a new user. Okay, so we'll go to local CPI. CPI authentication register. And then in the body, we will, of course, this will be JSON type. So we'll have the email as the email. It's just this that comes so we can check. Um, password. password. And since this is a registration, there is a confirm password that here. So I provided it as Okay. Oh, I think this this uh this is great now. And um, not found this is not lit with this post uh, posting it to the server. This and it. So we have in the register we debug it and we go to the user and then okay, succeeded. So we have the confirm email token, so you can see this is already encrypted. So we need to decrypt it. This encoded in V62 and the valid token is this one. Okay, so we pass with the URL and this will go to the email. This is the sending. Okay. So success is created, success is true. So its priority date is now so we are not passing the priority date. Okay. So we check the database. Okay, it's been registered and as you can see here the email confirmed. Uh, column is zero, it means false, so it's not confirmed yet. So we are sending to validate if it's really a valid email, the one who registered. So I use my email, my email is this one. So I will check my email if I get a uh, confirm. Okay, this so one. So welcome to the SME Central. So when you click that, you can have the this is the token in the user. When you click here, it will go to the app URL and the confirm email the static page. And just wait, it's the loading. Uh, after that, I check it this here already. Yeah, this is the confirm email, the user ID, and the token being passed here. And we debug it so it will find the user, it will uh, decode the token. A normal token is here now, so this is the token that we pass it here. And confirm email as thing succeeded, and now it's redirect to confirm email. So your email has been confirmed. And if we check from our database, it should be in a confirm button. I feel it should be true. That's already one. So that's, that's how to confirm if the registered user 
uh, use a valid email. So therefore, you can check this this column for validation of the valid email. All right. So guys, we have done now the confirm email. So if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the bell button. So in the next series, in the next tutorial, you will be updated. So this is a series of the ASP.NET Core with API using ASP.NET Core Identity System. So we started it from creating, uh, registering a user and login, having to log in and generating the token. And now we're able to have the confirmed email to check if the registered user had inputted a really uh, true email. Okay, so we use SendGrid API for the sending of email. So if you don't know how to use SendGrid, I have a tutorial there. So just go to my tutorial. There is a step-by-step -step on how to create a SendGrid API. So it's, you can use the free API for the SendGrid and it will allow you to send an email from your client. So happy learning guys and hope you will like this video. If you have some message, just comment below and see you in the next series in the next video. Bye-bye.